Hello and welcome, my name is Nipolis and this is Literally Graphic. And today I'll be talking about my first DC Inc. title, Mara Tiebreaker, with words by Danielle Page and pictures by Stephen Byrne. This volume is, as I mentioned, part of the DC's new YA DC Inc. imprint and was published on April 2nd, 2019. A New York Times bestselling YA author, Danielle Page lives in New York City and has been awarded several daytime Emmys. Stephen Byrne, on the other hand, appears to live in London, although his profile is apparently low enough that it's hard to tell. Turning over the book, DC Inc. has decided to describe it officially thusly. Princess Mira is teenage royalty and heir to the throne of Zebel, a penal colony ruled by the other not-so-lost land under the sea, Atlantis. Her father, his court, and the entire kingdom are expecting her to marry and introduce a new king, but Mira is destined to wear a different crown. Dot, dot, dot. When the Zebelian military plots to overthrow Atlantis and break free of its oppressive regime, Mira seizes the opportunity to take control over her own destiny by assassinating Arthur Curry, the long-lost prince and heir to the kingdom of Atlantis. But her mission gets sidetracked when Mira and Arthur unexpectedly fall in love. Will Arthur Curry be the king at Mira's side, or will he die under her blade as she attempts to free her people from persecution? An astonishing graphic novel that that explores duty, love, heroism, and freedom, all through the eyes of readers' favorite undersea royalty. To be frank, the art was really nice, and that was about it. In my haphazard experience of the big two, DC has always been a bit more open to the alternative styles, and of all the aspects of this new ink imprint, I think that the choice to go with a more graphic novel direction for some titles is probably a good one. Obligatory comment about not being the target audience goes here. But for the heaven's sake, I read YA, lots of adults read YA, and this was milquetoast even for YA, or even especially for YA. It's certainly not every YA title, but there's lots of pretty edgy content out there, and this was basically middle grade level of plotting here. Or rather, I didn't feel like anything was earned, as it were. Things just happened. Bah! This was frustrating. Pretty, but frustrating. And did I mention the name Zebel? (laughs) Although that term at least does predate this book by a bit. (laughs) How are gender and sexuality addressed in this book? Not well. I think this book is under some delusion that that is showing some sort of female empowerment, but it's not. We barely see Mira, or anyone else, do any action, and she ends up getting all emotional about the one thing she sets out to do, which is kill Aquaman. There's love triangles within love triangles and women versus women at all. The queen seems nice, but this book isn't about her, and if it was, I'm sure it would be... ruined too. Race and class were a bit more troubling in that they were there but not there. Obviously the initial conflict that sets off this little plot line is ostensibly about colonization and or imperialization. The fact that Mira's kingdom, which she is apparently a monarch of, cue bad politics there, is below the Atlantean kingdom but all these powerful differences eventually get ironed over. Are they different? Are they the same? They certainly look the same. Are they actually bad? Or is it all just one big misunderstanding and old-fashionedness? And we're left with the black people being sort of totally left out of the picture by the end. Bye y'all. Keep reading and resist white supremacy. And as always, I would like to acknowledge that for the most part, all of my videos are filmed and produced on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and Anishinaabe people the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation, land covered by the dish with one spoon, wampum belt covenant.